all the uh, troubles which um, modern people need in pandemic situation. And if someone participated in my previous uh, seminar, which was uh, devoted to the loaned helplessness uh, phenomena, uh, you can remember uh, that this state can be of two uh, variations, of two kinds. So it can be um, a terminate state, so as a state of loaned helplessness, when people feel that they can't overcome they uh, can only face the trouble, but not fight the trouble, that they have no uh, power to be self-esteemed, to be self-determined. And it is only the objective position, which is uh, uh, not connected with the uh, uh, objective state of situation. So they think that they're helpless. And this uh, state of being helplessness uh, influences four important personal spheres. The first is emotional sphere. The second is motivation. The next is willpower. And uh, the last, so as the, uh, as the crown of the process, is cognitive sphere of personality. So, and during our last seminar, uh, I tried to explain how e this state is being developed uh, in uh, personality due to specific uh, parental attitude in the families. So, if uh, parents um, put the child into position of very infant of very small and unable so such child grows up into the helpless adult person so and uh, you can ask scientific interest is connected with something we have now in the world with pandemia and COVID-19 and I see the direct connection because if people in the previous times uh, could have roots and predispositions for a long helplessness development, the situation of pandemia is a very um, strong uh, factor for developing this helpless state into personal um, into personal state, not just the situative, not just the temporary state. So I didn't overcome the difficulty, I feel helpless. So I press myself, I teach myself, I master my skills and I can overcome the difficulty. But now what we have, we stay at home, we are in the lack of communication, uh, all our needs are deprived, and we do not know what is going on in the whole world. So we um, have no general and very uh, clear information about what is going on with this COVID-19. And all this situation leads to personal, not, not state, but personal feature as helplessness. And now I'm working on, uh, on a paper, on the article where I compare the lone helplessness state and uh, personal lone helplessness with something which we have now in the world um, with COVID-19. So if you don't mind, I can share my ideas how this four-part state of lone helplessness can be found uh, in the situation of pandemia now. So, and um, let me uh, argue to my, to my preparing paper. So it is not um, completed now, I am in the process, but I am ready to share my ideas with you. So I told you that 
on the first, uh, on the early stages of ontogenetic development, uh, young kids, so um, since three to six years old, uh, the most sensitive personal sphere is emotional sphere. So if kids feel stress, if they are frustrated, if they live in toxic families, so they can find um, uh, roots of personal helplessness in themselves. So they're anxious, they are not self-esteemed, they feel that um, the world is not safe and so on. So the same, now all adult people feel in the situation of pandemia. So the population of all countries experiences dysphoric emotional states, the central link of which is panic, anxiety, aggression, despair, frustration, and uncertainty. So this was the first feelings which that COVID is real. So not all people, and I live in city in Krasnoyarsk and center of Siberia, and the situation with COVID is uh, not so uh, dangerous in our city uh, in comparison with Moscow, for example, or St. Petersburg. But we are almost near the very, um, very dangerous situation. So we are locked in our houses, we uh, do not do our job as we used to, and it is very difficult to stay in this uh, emotional tension. So the second part, the second sphere of personality, which can be very sensitive to uh, learned helplessness development, is motivation. And usually, this sphere suffers from a helplessness state when uh, a kid is about six, seven, or eight years old. Here in Russia, this is the period, uh, period uh, when kids enter the school, and so they should change the type of motivation. When they are kids of uh, kindergarten age, they can play and the only motivation is to develop personally through the game situation, through playing process. But when kids enter the school, they should, they have to change their motivation into study motivation. So um, teachers uh, say usually stop playing games and start learning things. And it is very uh, important when it suits to the abilities of a kid, everything is, uh, goes uh, right and correctly. So if the uh, studying process is interesting, very emotional, safe, and suits the needs of a child, everything goes very good. But if a kid meets, again, anxiety, aggression, and his uh, teaching is his studying needs, uh, so his um, need to search for information uh, is blocked by um, not appropriate uh, relations from uh, teachers, from parents, so you have bad marks, you're not very smart student, so you should uh, train and train yourself, you're stupid fool and so on the motivation to study drops. So uh, now can, let's can go back to our pandemic situation. In current conditions, the motivational sphere has changed, even in adult, um, adult fields, yes, the field of adult people. The focus of dominant motivation from classical life values. So, in our usual common life, we were motivated to, uh, to professional development, to reading books, to communication, to supporting our relations, and so on. But now we um, can't um, be so involved in the process of now ourselves 
realization, self-actualization, professional and personal formation, and all the motivation in focus to maintaining of non-adaptive forms of preservation of life. For example, uncontrolled and non-rational purchase of basic necessities. I do not know the situation in India, but I saw the news and I read the news from social nets. There are a lot of my colleagues who share the information and they are all uh, people all over the world were shocked. For example, when people were uh, staying in a long, long queues just for one reason, to buy all the toilet paper in supermarket. So it was very strange motivation. It is a very strange way of, of self-preservation. So people were buying not necessary amount of food, for example. So uh, they did um, unexplained, unexplained things. So, and it was the shift of um, health motivation to unhealthy motivation well so the next uh, level the next sphere of personality which can be uh, involved in uh, developing learned helplessness state is willpower so when a teenager so teenager should uh, develop uh, his uh, willpower. So it is very important for a teenager to be a strong-willed person to make decisions himself, to be very brave, to, uh, to separate from families, so to stay alone with all the uh, specific of his personalities. So to become a willpowered person means uh, to become um, able to survive in this world. So I can overcome difficulty. So I'd like to fight the difficulty because all difficulties show me my personal features. So if I see uh, something which is difficult for me to overcome and I say, ha, so okay, so let's do that. I do not know how I will overcome it, but I will try my power. Uh, I don't have a plan, but I, I have motivation to do something for me. And only after overcoming this difficulty, I can understand the, the level of my skills. So uh, my qualification, my life qualification, what am I able to do? And uh, when person, when teenager, so is growing in a toxic um, parental relations, so he or she thinks that I'm not able to do anything without help of my parents. I am not able to do something in my life generally. And let's go to the situation of pandemia now. So, so will the level of self-control, for example, as a manifestation of the will of the population has significantly decreased, which has been manifested in the violation of the regime of the day. So you know that many people um, ruined their daily graph, their daily schedule. Many people started watching sitcoms and so on during all the night. So now after they couldn't wake up in the morning and do their scheduled so their common activities for example uh, go to the gym do their morning rounds and so on and I met such situation with my colleagues with my clinical psychologist which I teach during their professional um, after diploma courses and uh, they shared their experience that it is very difficult for them to wake up in the morning. One girl, one young clinical psychologist, so she is a professional, so she told me that as I, so my husband, we were watching movies till the morning. And now we have nothing to eat because we didn't cook. 
So, and now we are in depression and so on and so forth. So it is uh, all uh, connected with self-control. So uh, it seems uh, like someone can control people um, people are controlled by super ego of society, but not of their own super ego. So uh, uh, it is. It looks like lack of super ego development. There is no adult part in modern adult people who can control and say, "Okay, now it's six a.m. and you should wake up and do everything you should do as adult person." So, uh, where am I? So, violation of the regime of the day, uh, lack of reliance on elementary rules of time management. I have no time. So, what does it mean? People have uh, the time of all the day. So, and this day can be devoted to study, to reading books, to creating something important to communication by, so what we are doing now, by different social um, nets or technical programs. And we can use this period of time to feel the lack, to feel the deficit, to remove the deficit of everything that we suffered in our usual life. But people have lack of time management and it is obvious. So, cool down of maintaining the foundations of healthy lifestyle. I do not know uh, the situation in India, but I know about European countries and I know it's about Russia. This using of um, abusing of alcohol uh, has grown um, rapidly uh, on about 30%. So the amount of buy uh, of alcohol which was bought in supermarket so raised to 30%. And it is also awful because people were uh, blocked in their houses. They did not, didn't know what to do with their lives. And they started drinking alcohol. So what we met. And um, in our country, um, our government, so proposed uh, a rule so um, the um, alcohol is not sold now um, after this special time so after 6 um, so p.m. so it is uh, not allowed to sell alcohol in supermarkets because of this problem as well so um, Violation of the regime of self-isolation with full awareness of the consequences by the mass media. I heard from my Italian, Italian and Spain colleagues that uh, the situation which was um, in their countries about two, three weeks ago, you know that these two countries were in very high danger of COVID-19 because um, the situation was awful. The amount of people who um, were ill with COVID-19 was so high that um, medical sphere couldn't overcome the difficulty. And the only reason for such um, fast development of this disease was a uh, violation of self-isolation regime. So when it was announced that people uh, are not working anymore, so the self-isolation regime started, all people decided that it's a kind of vacation, it's a kind of weekend. So it was the middle of spring and all people started walking in gardens with uh, children, so making picnics and so on. And that is why COVID started spreading very fastly, so fast that uh, the system of medical system couldn't help the situation. So, and I connected also with the violation of willpower sphere. So, and uh, the last sphere, 
which can be influenced uh, in this situation and I think is uh, directly connected with um, learned helplessness phenomenon because uh, when um, a child has violation in his emotional sphere, he has lack of study motivation, so he is not um, developed enough to study himself, to have skills of self-study. After that, he has um, ruined willpower sphere because he can't press himself to overcome difficulties, for example, to stick to the plan, to uh, complete any routine and any, any affair to the end. After that, the final and uh, the most um, obvious is lack um, of cognitive sphere development. When we have no experience in overcoming difficulties, we have lack and uh, disadvantage of life strategies, of any cognitive strategies of solving the problems. And this is the final, which we have uh, um, sometimes among uh, youth, uh, among uh, students, when we cannot study. So I, I read letters, but I cannot understand the text, for example. And it is not connected with brain violations. Sometimes it is connected with learned helplessness. I'm not able to study. I am not able to make decision. I am not able to overcome difficulty. I am not able to work myself out in the crisis situation. And so the same is about adult people who are now in pandemic situation. There is an uh, acute problem of selectivity in terms of information absorption. So people uh, climb, people eat all the information from mass media, from um, people around. So people believe in different myths about coronavirus, but they do not read, for example, elementary Wikipedia papers, Wikipedia articles, just to know what is going on. What are the symptoms? So what is the virus? So what is the difference between flu and coronavirus and so on? So in our university, for example, it was decided that all the staff should uh, uh, be taught what is coronavirus infection. Even I, I'm a psychologist. I don't have medical education, but I had to study everything. What is going on? How to behave? What are the symptoms? And uh, uh, how to define coronavirus and flu, for example? How can they help people? So what is the best variation? So why shouldn't you take any uh, antibiotics during this period of time? What is dangerous to do? What is not dangerous to do? Uh, we were given the direct strategies of uh, defining and overcoming this situation. So, and uh, this helps me to calm down all my relatives and friends. So they know where to dig the information, whom to ask, but most of people are not given this information. That is why many people think that coronavirus is something is a myth. So it's a fairy tale. Uh, it's something which was invented by politicians and so on. And they still do not believe that it is really a dangerous situation. But there is other part of population who not just even believe, they are so frightened with this that uh, they, they are in panic. So, and it is also very difficult. Well... So this uh, led to reduction of critically thinking, inability to change the usual methods of response to crisis situation, and uh, the ability um, to create new, flexible, more adaptive um, kinds of living, strategies of living. So they just said and said, so most people, so I do not know what to do, I am shocked. I can do nothing. 
So not to find new ways. And you know that many businesses are closed. So many people lost their money and job because they are not able to be flexible in this situation. This is the problem. And uh, I think that the consequence of all these four factors, four big groups of symptoms of learned helplessness during pandemic of COVID-19 will influence the situation in the future, not only this year, but many years after that, because you know that many people lost their job. Um, so uh, students and school pupils, so they suffered from lack of education. So the distant learning differs from a uh, subjective personal learning process. So it is not controlled somehow. The level of education dropped. And if a person is not very motivated to uh, find and search for the correct information, so uh, he or she will uh, be the victim of manipulation of, I suppose. And if to discuss not only uh, influence of the pandem this pandemic situation on the people from emotional, motivational, willpower and cognitive sphere, we can discuss this problem from the position of ontogenetic problems. So young people, small children, they do not visit kindergartens. And you know that one day in children's society for a child is very important for development. Many parents, most parents, are not taught and are not able to, um, to take the position of a teacher, of a nurse, so they are not taught and not skilled enough to teach their children to um, organize their time. And most parents say, so wow, I'm going mad, going to be mad from my kids. I'm studying, hating my kids because I don't know what to do with all of them. I do not know how to use all this time. I am tired. So it is not allowed to walk in the street. It is spring, it is summer now. I am blocked with my kids. They played all the games. They watched all the movies and films. So, so it's really a mess. <laughs> so I see you have kids here in our session. <laughs> That's great. Well, so... If we're speaking about school um, children, especially about um, those who should uh, complete their school education. So they should, uh, they had and um, were planned to pass the final exams, their finals at school. And what we have here in Russia, for example, my son this year, so, uh, he completed his ninth grade and he had to uh, receive his um, um, document of uh, medium education, medium school education, and he had to pass his exams. All the exams uh, were not even delayed, but we have no exams now, so we have no uh, ability to check the level of knowledge of students. And so how can they enter college? How can they enter the professional exam, for example? And now the only thing they can do is to continue their school education. But many uh, pupils, so they um, didn't want to receive higher education. They didn't want to go to university. They wanted to start their professional education now. And this means that they didn't have choice. And this is the consequence of such situation. Another difficult part of school problems is for uh, those school students who completed high school. So they had to enter the university. And now they have many difficulties with um, passing through their finals 
and entering the university. They didn't have opportunity to visit campions of universities, to choose their professional sphere by their own plan. So they now just have to choose um, any speciality which their own city gives. So local city gives because there, are no, there is no opportunity to move to another city, to enter the university in another city because the communication between cities is also very difficult. Um, as for the students, I know from my colleagues uh, that many lectures and many seminars um, were delayed and they were uh, transit to the distant form. But you know that if uh, we can be very effective in theoretical part, how can we uh, demonstrate our practical skills? So if I can speak to my students and if I can give and show them something with my, um, with my hands, with my voice, with my body, with all my phenomenology, now I cannot do it because we are very far from each other. And they are really crying, especially girls. So, Alicia, we miss your lessons. So, it is very difficult. We are tired of distant learning. So, we didn't value it before, but now it's really like a fairy tale. So, they want to pass exams. So, you see, so they want to meet a teacher even to pass the exam. So, it means that there is a specific lack of communication with the teacher, with the tutor, and it is also the problem. As for our medical university, I can say that there is a big piece of uh, benefit from pandemia because our medical students, our future doctors, were, um, became volunteers and they got very um, specific and precious experience of overcoming COVID-19. It was really dangerous for them. So the uh, so it, it was like a war for them, but they obtained huge experience. So this is the only tiny benefit from this situation. If we can speak about people of Middle Age, for example, like we are, so you know that many people lost their job. Um, the statistics, for example, of China shows that um, many people divorced after pandemia because people are not used to um, stay with, uh, with a partner. So 24 hours per day, seven, seven days per week, and it is really a very big tension. We were, uh, um, so we lost our private space. And it is really hard because you know that our psychological space, our private space is very important for our safety. It is our core need. We cannot be always uh, involved in social communication, even with those who is very important for us, even with our parents, with our husbands and wives and kids, because we should have our private space. And another problem is uh, distant work. Most people had to change their office places into computers, but computers at home, and there is such phenomena is uh, um, stress overlap. When people do not know, I am at home, but I am working. Where is the place for rest? So uh, there is no difference between two important parts of life, my professional activity and my private life. When I should write a report and my children are running around away, and I lose my internet connection, but nobody is interested uh, in my troubles because my boss wants my report immediately and I don't have my colleagues near me to ask the recommendation and any advice. 
So it is really a stressful thing. As for people over the third age, uh, they are very stressed by both parts. So they are in the risk group of COVID-19 because you know that immune system is not so strong. They suffer from fear because I'm blocked. Uh, I didn't see my kids and my relatives for many months. It is very stressful. So my neighbor yesterday shared me with tears that uh, her friend didn't see her mom but they live in uh, in close uh, buildings so and uh, she is crying she says it's really stressful i cannot see my mom i just buy food so go to the door leave the food and go away not to, to be um, a risk factor to her and um, the next uh, important thing for people who are of the third age so they, um, they do not know what to do because this risk uh, doubles uh, all the stress which is connected with age. So I'm not very young, so I have not many time for my life. And this is uh, the additional dangerous factor which can shorten my life. And I know that many people, many Old people in Russia, for example, my parents, they are involved in, in gardening, so they have their own uh, uh, grounds where they plant vegetables and, uh, and fruits, and it's a kind of hobby to support their motivation to live. For example, if I plant any seed, I am watching like it is growing, and I am happy that I have results, and so it gives me motivation to live. But now most people of uh, the third age are in lack of this activity. They are not used to stay at home and do nothing without any communication. So I think that speaking about learn helplessness in these pandemic times uh, is very difficult from these two sides. And another thing which we as psychologists will need is so as I call it now parallel pandemia. So pandemia which is connected with psychological health, with mental health of population. And it is also influences uh, medical staff who are working with COVID-19 because many of them are blocked in um, hospitals. They cannot communicate with their families and it is really stressful for them. For example, one of my colleagues, she didn't see her family since uh, 30 or 23rd of March because she, she lives in isolation she helps those people who are ill with COVID-19 and uh, I know that she will need rehabilitation period after she will lead this uh, hospital. So colleagues, my presentation is not very positive. I know <laughs> I told you many, um, so many dull things, uh, but what should I do? It's my job. And uh, I think that using our international initiatives, we can create any programs which can be used after this pandemic period will slow down and even stop. Because we will live with the same people, but these people will be very different. And we as psychologists should be very flexible to this situation. And our responsibility is to change the methods and the strategies of our psychological support concerning uh, diagnostics, psychological help in consulting work, psychotherapy, and maybe even psychoprevention of all the consequences of a pandemic period. So this is uh, 
the end of my theoretical part. And if you have any question, so I beg you, speak not very fast for me. And um, if I will ask you to repeat your question, so please <laughs> be patient to my English. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, doctor, for the wonderful session. We actually enjoyed it. Though the PPD presentation was not there, your, your input was really good, ma'am. Thank you so much for the informative session. So Thank uh, I, you. Yeah. I now request uh, Dr. Sujata Malmi to give a um, brief feedback on the session, please. Doctor? Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. yeah. It's very nice, ma'am. On the overall, your presentation was uh, overall. Uh, your presentation was very nice, and you have given uh, uh, explanation on learned helpless, helplessness, and um, you have given uh, live examples uh, that too related to COVID nineteen. So, uh, in this uh, realistic situation how people are behaving and what are the psychological problems they are facing. It was well explained by you. I hope all the participants who are here yeah. with us, they have um, got enlightened related to the psychological support they need to get during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation. A lot of psychological problems and uh, the mental state of uh, the students and uh, uh, the uh, individuals, even in the uh, individuals in the society, uh, they have a lot of uh, stressful situation. They undergo a stressful situation during this COVID-19 repeatedly. And uh, they come to believe that we need to practice ourselves to live with this COVID-19 for uh, almost maybe six months or one year. So in this situation, I hope your session will be very fruitful for all the participants to cope up with their uh, psychological uh, fear psychological stress and other psychological problems related to COVID-19 and um, uh, other issues also. So in this aspect, I am so happy that you have explained in a clear-cut manner and um, very uh, uh, slow and uh, uh, calm uh, presentation. I hope everyone have uh, understood that. So with this uh, feedback, I expect uh, questions and uh, queries from other participants so that you can uh, interact with them and you can uh, clarify their doubts if there is. Uh, now participants, I request you to raise your hands to use the raise your hands button uh, to ask questions. If you would like to put it on the chat box, please do. It will be read out to the resource person and uh, yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good yes, evening. sir, please proceed. Good evening. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, my question is... Uh... Sir, it is not audible. A little bit louder, please. Uh, Ma'am, my question is, uh, how can uh, learned helpness cause depression Mm -hmm. So, surely, uh, the long helplessness state, even in usual times, not connected with the pandemia, so uh, leads to depression, because the depression is lack of activity connected with lack of motivation. I have no sense to live with all my resources. And... Uh, um, the founder of positive psychology, so the scientist who was the first speaking about learned helplessness state, Martin Seligman, so the American psychologist, I hope you know about him. So uh, he told that anxiety and depression are two sides of learned helplessness state because from one side, I'm afraid to live my life. From another side, I'm not going to live my life because I'm afraid to do it. So it is directly connected. And uh, most people who have depression, they feel helpless. So if you will ask 
your uh, depressive patients. So what do they feel? And you will point out, does your state uh, seems and is felt like you are helpless? So I think that they will say, yes, I feel helplessness. That is why I do nothing. Okay, thank, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Maybe if you have any questions or feedbacks or recommendations or something else, I will be very happy to communicate with you here on our chat or by email or maybe by Facebook Messenger. So that is okay for me to communicate. Uh, thank you for that, ma'am. Uh, we'll definitely send your uh, profile to people so that they thank can you. mail you. And uh, uh, I could see uh, Mr. Nitish K. Jose uh, raise their hand. Can you please mute your, unmute yourself and ask a question, sir, please? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Nitish. <coughs> okay. Um, Pardon, Ananya. Yes, ma'am. One question from uh, YouTube link. Srinivasan was asking, uh, I don't know why, uh, what it means. The question uh, was in, written in the chat box, like 260s version and 2, 2K version are living together with four Android beings. <laughs> Do you really feel that staying home is happy? Different gender. So the, the, the big part of question was not <laughs> <laughs> transferred to me because of poor internet connection. So will you maybe repeat it once again or someone will happy or will, will be very helpful to <laughs> 260 <laughs> version mm -hmm. and two 2K version are living together with mm -hmm. four Android beings, do you really feel that staying home is happy? So staying uh, home is heavy with okay. different so generations. Happy. Yes. So it depends on family, and it depends of. Uh, so when I was uh, talking that staying home with family is really difficult, I meant uh, that. There are different types of communication in family, and uh, if the relationship are toxic, it will be awful. So we will meet the family violence. So if people didn't have close communication, for example, they are just married, but they have no relations, it will be really difficult for them because when you see each other, 24 hours per day, you can understand that you didn't know your partner at all. But when family has close relations, when everyone uh, feels the psychological borders, everyone tries to be very patient and supportive, it could be really a nice vacation to stay at home with your family. So it is um, very dependent on um the level of um relations in families uh, i have one question okay, okay. thanks you're welcome ask ma'am i have one question ma'am uh, some know the students are taking the online classes and they are habitual of on taking the online classes what when the lockdown is over, everything is normal, they come to their normal routine. Their psychology is definitely, we have to change their psychology because they become the online habitual. How can we dump it? <coughs> so, we, <laughs> there are two ways of solving this problem. We should do something even now. For example, we can contact this part of population and motivate them to do something with their life so to stick to the plan to be more skilled in time management and so on or we can create different um, psychological techniques to support them after the situation will be normal so um 
Sorry, but we should be the most flexible part of the world, I suppose. And we should be ready to all the changes in people and not to be shocked. And um, one of my friends is joking that uh, after pandemic is over, I will be the richest person in our city because I will have so many clients to solve their psychological problems. I hope <laughs> I won't be because I wish all the people on only health and luck and both mental and um, physical. But I think uh, uh, there is um, a piece of uh, truth in, in, his, in his joke. So we, we should uh, we should watch and um, so um, um, be very careful and be ready to help with any support to people when the situation will be normal. But I think that the situation will be normal but different, very different. We won't have pandemia, but the world will never be the same. So it is obviously everything is changing. The uh, business, communication, relations, so teaching process, you know that we live now in uh, informational society. So, and the way of exchanging of information uh, now is very different. Everything is distant. Everything is, uh, is not personal and subjective, but objective. So, and I think that will be the reason of um, personal changes. I know that one of my colleagues, so she defended her um, candidacy dissertation on clinical psychology in May. And her dissertation was devoted to um, the criteria of norm in psychology. So uh, she studied the uh, generation of people uh, who are now about 25 years old on medium. And she studied their uh, mental health and um, she um, revealed that the criteria of norm changed. So what was in classical pathological psychology out of the borders of norm now should be included in norm because computers, internet, and uh, the way of accepting the information changed cardinally. And we should be very attentive to everything uh, all the psychological process, um, all the ways of um, accepting the information and perceiving the information is very different. And now we are on the next stage of changing of it. So everything is computerized. So the, uh, the close connections, the family connections became closer but the distant connections, for example, collegial connections and relations became more distant. So everything is changing and uh, now we cannot tell and give the exact, the direct methods now. We should start searching the situation and uh, should create new methods together, I suppose, using the experience of China, for example, because now they have special course books and uh, uh, books with uh, methodical recommendations of how to organize psychological help to people who overcame COVID-19. So you see that they are quite forward, the whole world, so we should take the experience and see how can we use it in our reality, in our cultures. Thank you for that, ma'am. Uh, so due to time constraint, I think only one more question we will uh, take and then uh, we have another session, which is the resource person is waiting. So uh, let the last question be from uh, Uma Maheshwari ji. Ma'am, please proceed with your question. Uh, 
Hello. Yeah, ma'am, you can be. You are you are heard. Please to continue. Next. Um, I think she is not online. Okay. Uh, I uh, at this juncture, uh, Ananya. Yes, ma'am. I would. Hello. Request, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Can you I'm hear sure. me? Yes, ma'am. We could. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah, you can ask. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, that being expert in a certain field is more essential, uh, or uh, knowing the basic knowledge of all the fields is essential to overcome such uh, pandemic periods? Hello. Yeah. Am I clear? Can you please? So, uh, yeah. Yes. Can Can you repeat it again? So, what What yeah. is the Please be a little slow, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think uh, that being expert in one field is better, or being a uh, basic knowledge in all the field is essential to overcome uh, this pandemic period? Uh, I think it's it's a very serious question, and uh, um, yeah. I think that if people are in the know of all these yeah. problems they can decide what to do with um, this pandemic situation. So I, I do not know how to um, answer your question responsibly because we are only in the first stage of meeting this situation. Now we are starting to face the consequences of COVID-19 and we should um, state the problems and then decide how we will cope with these difficulties. Now I think that we should compile all the information which we receive from different countries to generate our um, experience. And after that, maybe we will even uh, invent specific manuals for psychologists what to do here and what is the technology of overcoming the difficulties not just knowledge truly not just knowledge because uh, theoretics uh, theoretical part of our knowledge uh, costs nothing if it is not implemented into practice yeah. thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you ma thank you for your question sujata ma'am uh, I am so happy to say that uh, Kannama Motan Professor Sultan Yildiz University is also with us uh, and uh, she is participating in this uh, webinar. I just request her to say a few uh, views uh, in short. Madam, are you there? Huh? Hello. Kannama ma'am? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, maybe she will join us in the next yeah. one. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, ma'am. So I now request uh, um, Professor Akshay Lakshmi to kindly give the vote of thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, it was a wonderful presentation. It was really beautiful and clear, I will say, because uh, the developmental stages along with the areas of work, like the schooling, then you just uh, included the workplace uh, and also you also included the parenthood and the family. It was really nice to hear your presentation. It was very well organized. Thank you so much for your presentation. And uh, uh, on behalf of the Department of uh, Special Education, uh, Alagappa University and the Department of uh, Psychology, American College, I really uh, thank you for be, uh, on behalf of them. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for invitation. Thank so you, it is really, it is really again a very nice experience to communicate with you, to see your uh, interested eyes, and uh, to hear your kind voices, and uh, it's really good. So and thanks to COVID nineteen, we are all here. <laughs> very true. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope to see you on our next seminars. Very sure, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, now uh, I think let's. Uh, it's time.